Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today we're going to be making this. So yeah, just kind of a cool pair of headphones with some nice joint details, cover some intermediate modeling, some poofy ear cups that we'll actually make with a cloth simulation, and of course we'll top it off with some materials and textures because it wouldn't be a Dirk video if I didn't slap my logo all over what we're making. Um, the lighting and animation is pretty simple, but I will be covering that as well at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in a pretty default blender scene here, what I want to do is model some headphones. I'm going to press A to select everything, X to delete it, and now delete everything which was selected. Now I will press Shift A, add in a circle, and before we do anything else in this little menu that pops up, I'm going to change the number of vertices from 32 to 24. Um, and what that's going to do is just give me a, a good amount so that when we make our little part that connects to the ear cup, we have sort of a nice extension past halfway. It's a little confusing. You'll see in just a moment. Now in edit mode, I'm going to press R, Y, and type in 90 so that that rotates 90 degrees on the Y axis. And uh, it is important to do that in edit mode so that our rotation here stays all zeroed out because we're going to do some mirroring and things in a little bit. And you want this to be all zero, zero, zero. So tabbing into edit mode here, what I'm going to do is press F to fill this in and then I to just inset it a little bit. And then I'm just going to bring it out on the Y or sorry, the X axis a little bit, something like that. You can do G X or if you just press G and then hold down on your middle mouse. And if you're already kind of pulling the right direction, it'll know that you want to go on the E, the X axis. I'm going to do that again right here. So E and then just press down on your middle mouse and it, it can usually kind of guess the right direction. So I think that looks pretty good. This is going to be, as you can see, the start of our ear cup piece. Um, so what I want to do now is actually pull off the part that's actually going to um, sort of be what it rotates on. So in my face select mode, I'm going to, um, holding control and just, oops, sorry, left click, alt, alt left click will select an edge ring. You can hold control and left click to come around the outside. Yes, that's what I wanted to do. Now, the reason I did 24 was so that this came just a little bit past halfway. Um, so it's going to rotate sort of on that right where the Y axis is right there. So I wanted to just come a little bit past halfway so we can kind of have a nice rounded detail there. Um, but what I'll do now is press shift D. Um, actually, let's do, let's undo that. Let's just separate this. So let's press P and separate by selection. Uh, and then I'm just going to move this out on the X axis so we can kind of see what we're doing there. Um, so what I want to do now is back in this object, I want to kind of refill this back in. So selecting that ring there, I'm going to go into my top view so I can see a little bit better. E, X, and just bring that till it's about evened up right there. Don't have to be perfect, but that looks good. And then I want to sort of fill back in all these faces. So Rather than selecting them all like this and going around the outside, selecting one by one, Blender in a case like this does a pretty good job of knowing where you want to fill in. So you can just select that one edge right there, press F, and just keep pressing it. And it's very satisfying. It'll go around the outside and fill things in. And I'll even get that little triangle there at the end. Um, but what I want to do next is smooth this whole thing out a little bit. I'm going to do that with a subdivision surface, but that makes everything way too smooth. And that's because usually when you're working with subdivision surface. You need to add in edge rings to make things nice and tight, um, but I don't want to do that manually for everything. So I'm going to undo that. Let's actually get rid of the subdivision. We will add it back in, but I'm going to add in those edge rings with a bevel modifier, which if you're familiar with the term bevel is going to do about what you think it would do. It's going to basically add in rings for us and I'll add in I think two segments. Um, so now when I add back in my subdivision surface, you can see we sort of retained those edges. So the sponsor of today's video is Skillshare. Now you've probably heard of Skillshare, but you might not know how vast their learning platform really is. I thought, why do I need Skillshare when everything's on YouTube for free? Well, it was silly of me to think that because even though YouTube is full of good stuff, Skillshare has even more to discover. After joining, I was greeted with a range of topics from familiar favorites like animation and software skills, but beyond that, there's courses that go into topics I usually just ignore but probably shouldn't. Things like productivity, marketing, even social media strategies all have their own courses in abundance on Skillshare. When you turn your 3D hobby into a business, you need to know these things. 
Personally, I was feeling a little behind with geometry nodes, so I joined this course by fellow YouTuber Bad Normals on creating this Raspberry. It's called Your First Geometry Nodes Project. It's been super fun to follow along, and I'm picking things up quite fast. If you're interested in exploring the full Skillshare class library totally free for an entire month, then check out my link in the description. The first 1,000 people to use my link or my code, Derek Elliott, will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Now you will start to get a little bit of a star shape here if you just use this big fat circle. This is called an N-gon. Most people really don't like those. Um, but to kind of hide that star shape, I can just press I to inset this. And that basically just gives us another loop. Um, the star shape is still there, but it's less visible now because it's not going all the way to the edge. Uh, so let's right click and shade that smooth. And that's gonna be pretty good for the start of that piece. Obviously we're gonna need to fill some stuff in here, but we'll tackle that in a second. Uh, so I wanna work on my edge or my ear, ear cup holder piece thing here, <laughs> whatever you wanna call that. Um, so I'm gonna go back into my top view here, E, X, and just kind of pull this over. And then uh, we're actually, we're gonna be doing some mirroring here. So I'm just gonna delete these and then, oops, let's undo that X faces and then I'm going to select press L hovering over that to select that whole linked island and delete those vertices because what I wanted to do was add in a mirror modifier which is going the wrong way let's have it go on the y-axis and disable the x-axis um, and then I'm going to do that same trick where I just fill in my faces oh so satisfying um, now I am going to turn on this clipping object option which as you can see in the tooltip will prevent vertices from going through the mirror during transform. If that's not on, they go through. If it is on, they get merged, clipped, whatever you want to call it, one or the other. Um, so let's add in our bevel modifier again, pull that back a tad, and uh, you can leave the segments at one probably. And then let's add in our subdivision surface so that's all smooth. Right click to shade it smooth, and then let's pull that back into position there. Um, so I was mentioning that we wanted this to be kind of round it off. So uh, part of the reason we do that is so that when this rotates on the y-axis, um, it doesn't intersect it as much and it wouldn't actually be rotating right there. It would be rotating more in this point. So let's go into edit mode on both these objects. Uh, I do this in edit mode so that the origin stays still, but let's push G and X and just pull that kind of to where that center point would be right around there. Um, so tabbing back out of edit mode, I can show you what I was talking about, R, Y. So you wouldn't want that intersection right there. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to add in an edge loop here. Um, but you know what? Before I do that, uh, and as I like to say, I have thought about this. I've <laughs> practiced this a few times, so I kind of know what's going to happen if I do one thing versus another. But um, this will get into a little bit of a, a complex geometry here. So if you're uh, not as familiar with kind of modeling, then you might want to leave it at something simple like this. But uh, what I did is just select some faces and extrude them up. Um, and I will press S and Z to flatten those out. Um, but we're going to do some sort of advanced, semi-advanced topology. I'm not a pro modeler, but um, this this took me a little bit to, to figure out the right edge flow here. Um, but anyways, what I'm doing is I'm going to press Control R and add in an edge ring here. And then what I want to do is just pull up on these vertices. So I'm going to press G twice to grab them and just kind of pull them up and then um, so pressing G twice will edge slide them so we kind of maintain our circular shape. If you just went GZ, you can see that eventually that's going to kind of go out of whack. It's not going to follow your circle. Um, but that is looking decent. Um, now the next thing I do want to do is kind of just pull all these things together so that um, this kind of creates a more organic shape. So if you press G twice and slide those into it, you're going to have doubles, which is going to create a lot of issues, especially with your bevel modifier. You can see we've kind of lost that. Um, but we want those to be merged together so that we don't have doubles. And there is this convenient option up here called auto merge vertices, which when they are on top of each other, it'll just merge them together, which is really convenient for this sort of edge sliding thing we're going to do. So I'm going to press G twice, pull those in, and then I'll actually do it here too. Pull those in. And then now what we have is um, we've got two triangles right here, which People in the 3D world on the internet really don't like triangles. I'm, I use triangles sometimes, don't tell anyone, but I'm going to press X and delete that edge loop, which is not much of a loop, it's just a one, but um, but now we have a little bit more of a nice 
sort of quad thing. There is a triangle here on the back, and we could actually get rid of that one too. Let's just pull this up right there, something like that. And now I think we have like all quads. You know, it's a triangle in there, but it's actually made up of quads. Um, but anyways, that's a that's kind of a nice edge flow. We've got our nice rounded thing down there. Um, but we do have some sort of funky things happening with the bevel. So I want to have a little bit more control over where the bevel is happening. So rather than using an angle limit method, I'm going to change this to weight. Um, but now what I need to do is define where the bevel needs to go. So uh, I'm going to select that edge, except for that piece. And then um, make sure instead of in vertices, you're in edges. Slide the bevel weight up to one there. Let's also do it right here. That's looking good. We can add in another level of subdivision just to see that this is nice and smooth. Still looks a little bit funky under there, but not too bad. Don't tell anyone. Um, I think that's going to be fine. So um, back in my side view here, I'm going to press E and just kind of pull this up, something like that. EZ. Um, we can adjust that shape later, but that's just going to be kind of where the headphone meets the, the rest of stuff. Um, you know, you could add in a bevel there if you wanted that to be kind of sharp. You know, maybe you want to pull it down a little bit. Uh, we're really getting into some stylistic preferences here. Uh, if you wanted, you know, you could have like a little razor edge detail there or do whatever the heck you want. It's not my headphone, it's yours. Uh, maybe the whole thing gets a little bit thinner, something like that. Just kind of trying to create some nice shapes here. Um, I think that that is looking pretty good though. We've got a nice fat ear cup. Uh, maybe this needs to be a little bit fatter to kind of match that so it's not so disproportionate. Um, but I might carry this bevel up to right here. Let's turn up bevel weight there. And then this will actually end up being a joint. So I'm going to add in some bevel weight there. And, you know, do we need two segments to make this tighter? Maybe we can make it bevel a little bit bigger. I don't know. The choice is yours, of course. Um, I think that, that looks fine like that. Should we just leave it at that? We'll just leave it at one so our subdivision can do a little bit more work. And let's just bring this back a tad. Okay, I think that that looks pretty darn good. And maybe I slide that down. Okay, okay, I'll stop making adjustments. That's sort of a nice flowing shape. Um, Semi-advanced modeling there if you were, you know, following along for the first time. Um, but, you know, it worked out. Modeling is, it can be very tricky, but it's really fun once you kind of figure out how things work. But anyways, what I want to do now is let's just fill in this front side a little bit more. So I'm going to press E and then scale this in just a tad. And then maybe we do E again, scale it in, bring it back. Just kind of creating, you know, we probably won't really see much here. I'm going to press I to inset that. Probably won't see much, but let's just, you know, we might add like a kind of a semi-transparent piece of fabric over here. So just if you did see in there, it'd be cool to see kind of, you know, like what could be a speaker detail or something. Um, but we shouldn't really see much of that. But we'll leave it like that for now. Um, so we've got pretty much our joint piece here. Uh, the headband is going to connect right there. And then we've got sort of our ear cup, which can now rotate nicely without any intersection. Uh, except, of course, you know. But that you're not going to do that, right? Um, anyways, let's go ahead and add in our cushion piece. So I'm selecting this edge ring thing here, Shifty, P to separate by selection. And uh, not a bad idea to go ahead and start naming things. Let's add this as ear cup. And then let's maybe add this F2 ear piece. Uh, did I spell something wrong? Not worried about it. Um, uh, joint, uh, what are we, uh, that sounds good to me, joint. Um, okay, so that's good. Um, let's now, let's move scale this up, scale this down, just, you know, E, bring that out. Um, just making it whatever shape you want. Something like that I think is going to look good. Nice fat ear cup, nice and cushy. Maybe we pull up some bevel weight here. Something like that I think looks good. Um, and then, you know, continue messing with this as much as you want. Get it to a cool shape. Maybe this comes out a little bit. Maybe this comes in a little bit. I think that's going to be pretty good for me. Now, you could leave it right like this. I think that that looks totally fine. But because I thought it would make the tutorial a little bit cooler, we're going to do some cloth simulation to kind of make this look really poofy. So... What I'm going to do is apply these modifiers. Control A on the bevel, 
and the subdivision should we do another one let's do two so uh, when you apply a subdivision modifier it'll take whatever levels in the viewport you had so i bumped that up to two for the viewport control a now we have a pretty dense mesh here so the first thing i want to do is add in a cloth simulation so in the physics properties add a cloth and then if you press spacebar you'll see that falls because now it is physics and it'll keep falling and for some reason this is really disturbing to me because it just it would never stop um, but to make it not fall so much i'm going to go into the property weights not the property weights the field weights turn gravity to zero so now it won't go anywhere which is totally fine um, but we want to do several more things here so one thing we're going to want to do is and one of the reasons we're doing this class simulation is to kind of create some interesting seams so the way seams work in the cloth simulation is that you basically down here in the shape option or sorry not seams like sewing so it will pull loose edges together so right now we don't have any loose edges so we're going to make some loose edges so let's tab into edit mode here and then let's select a couple rings here in my face select let's maybe try this one and this one something like that you can select more if you want you know you can go more on the inside um, but i found that this works pretty well and let's press x and then make sure you select only faces so it's going to leave the edges which you could describe those as loose edges oh my gosh that's what this sewing modifier sewing option needs now we press space bar boom they get sewed together and you have an andrew price donut rocked and ready Cool. Anyways, uh, I don't want it to like pull itself together like that. So I want it to look like there's some pressure in there. And what could that's the checkbox? It's the pressure checkbox. Now you do need to pull it up a little bit. Um, whatever you want, you can experiment with that. Um, but yeah, something you know, under ten, if you're working about how I've been working, uh, works pretty good. Um, so that that's fine. Let's leave that at that. Now if you're things starts like going off weird directions. It could be that you need to recalculate your normals. Um, sometimes if part of the mesh is facing the wrong way, then the pressure can get confused. They'll try to push some things out, some things in. Um, but another thing, if your model is kind of flying away, sometimes you want to use a pin group here. So what that'll do is basically tell certain vertices to stay still, to not move. So I'm going to kind of imagine that there's maybe like a a glue strip right right there that's holding it to that piece um, so in my vertex groups down here in the little green triangle tab object properties or something I forget what it's called object data properties is this one object properties that's just object properties so in the object data properties add a new vertex group assign it you can name it pin if you want to but I'm not going to be adding any other vertex groups so I'll just know that that's the group so the pin group is going to be that one um, so now it'll stay latched to that place and we don't have to worry about it flying away. So this is already looking really cool, really kind of funky, um, but to make it look even cooler and to really see those seams, I'm going to add in a solidify modifier, which will give it some thickness. You can see kind of where we're going with this and then maybe even add in a subdivision surface after that, which is really going to start to highlight some of those things happening. So that is pretty cool. So. Let the simulation run as much as you want so you've got kind of an interesting shape, something like that I think looks good for me. And then you can go ahead and control A to apply the cloth simulation. So now those changes are all kind of locked in and that, that's our geometry. Uh, so we can leave on the solidify and the subdivision now in this case. So got pretty much our whole ear cup here. Um, like I said, we may add in sort of a fabric piece after the fact there, but that's just going to be basically a, a circle. So that's pretty simple um, but what I want to do now is let's pull this whole thing sort of over a little bit and then I want to basically mirror all these parts to the other side because of course our headphones are gonna have uh, support for dual ear action I know not a common feature but yes ear cups on both sides so I'm gonna add in an empty and that'll be whatever kind of empty you want. I'm going to use a cube. Um, so we're going to do, you know, instead of just duplicating it to the over the other side, you know, in case we ended up, you know, wanting to make a change or something over here, like, like, oh, that looks 
kind of cool. Oh my gosh, should I leave that? We won't do it for now. But uh, instead of setting my origin to the middle and then mirroring it across the origin, which is how the mirror modifier usually works, and instead of duplicating it, I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. And then instead of it, again, by default, mirroring about the origin, I want to mirror it about this object. And now it's going to be mirrored over there, but our origin can stay in a nice place. So, you know, if we rotate this one, it's going to rotate on the other side as well. Um, so let's copy this modifier. I wonder if I can, can I control C and control V? Eh, I don't think that worked. <laughs> let's add in a mirror modifier on this object as well. Mirror it to that side. And then this object already has a mirror. Um, but just for the sake of organization, I'm going to add in another mirror. And this will say, um, you could name it. I just, I don't name mirror, I don't name modifiers. I probably should, but I just never have more than like a couple. And I'd rather just fiddle around with it and kind of get annoyed rather than, you know, have things organized. So, so those all have mirror modifiers on them. Great. So we've got everything on both sides. If we were to make a change on one of them, it would do it on both of them. Control Z to undo that. Um, always a good idea just to like, you know, I always like to test things, make sure they're working right. Um, but that's all good. Now, if we rotated this object, which we could in our animation or something, which we'll do eventually, um, we would want the ear cup to move with it. So let's select the ear cup, then select the ear piece, I think is what I named it. Control P, object, keep transform. Now if I rotate one, that's going to go with it because it's now parented. It's a parent-child relationship. Um, but I do want this piece to be able to move sort of independently. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I think, um, and I kind of want to make the whole thing curved sort of like like inwards like that, because that's just kind of what the headphones look like when they're not on a head. Um, so I'm going to add in an empty object. Uh, let's just make that another cube, which I should probably like get in the habit of using other shape empties, but the cubes are just, they're nice. They stand out. I like them. So um, this is this piece is already parented to this piece. So I'm going to take this piece and this piece, and then lastly select the empty and control P, keep transform. So now I can rotate this, and then like our whole setup is sort of rotating. So just kind of find a nice angle, find a nice place, and then we're going to start modeling that headband. So, you know, get that to kind of wherever you feel like is right. I think something like that looks pretty good for me. And let's start making that ear cup thing. So what I will do is mm, I could steal some geometry here, but I think that got a little confusing last time I tried to do it. So I'm just going to press shift C to set my cursor to the center. And then I'm going to add in a new object. Let's have that object be a cube. Tab in edit mode, scale it down a little bit, and then I'm just gonna move it over in edit mode. So our origin stays in the middle, and um, let's make that have a mirror modifier. And have it mirror to the other side. Let's go ahead and turn on our clipping. Merge is already on by default, I suppose. Maybe I just did that, I don't know. Um, and then I'm just gonna place this kind of right here and sort of scale it down just until it kind of lines up with our piece there. And then maybe let's do SY and we'll need to make some adjustments, but I'm just gonna select this top face now and kind of make our headband shape. Now for a little bit of a reference, I'm gonna tab out of edit mode, add in a circle, and then let's um, rotate this on the X axis. And then we're just gonna use this kind of as a, just a little bit of a reference for the shape here just so we can kind of have an idea of where we want to go with this so that it looks decent, something like that. I think it's going to be good. Um, so now in this object, let's just go ahead and start sort of extruding this all out. And I can actually go ahead and add in a subdivision surface so I can see that those are actually nice and circular. And then, yeah, just kind of pull the whole thing over until it all lines up like that. Now you don't want to use too much geometry here. I might have added an extra edge loop that I didn't need to, but pressing Alt-Z to go in X-ray mode here, by the way, 
Let's actually, yeah, I think I got, I think I got more than I need. Let's delete that edge loop. Just kind of trying to have as few vertices to mess with as possible. Shade that smooth. We can add in another level of subdivision. Uh, and then now we just kind of need to tweak this area down here so that it syncs up a little bit better. Let's add in our bevel and then let's have that be, of course, before the subdivision because this is going to be kind of acting as control loops. And then let's do the weight limit method so that we can kind of match it to the shape down here. So I want to have this edge and then also this edge get the bevel and then the whole bottom area will get the bevel. Turn that all up and then I'll leave the outside without the bevel, I think. Okay, so now I it looks like I need to make this bevel a little bit smaller so that that gets a little bit tighter. I just kind of want to match it down here. What was this? This was a 0.031, and this is a 0.013. Very interesting. Did that have two segments? No, that just had one. So theoretically, that would match up. You know, you could add in like another piece there, or you could maybe like make this a little bit bigger. Do what you want just so that that kind of feels like it lines up a little bit. Uh, and of course you can make adjustments after the fact. Um, I'm not gonna make this so that like there's actually a piece in there that slides, but of course you could do that if you wanted to. Um, now I noticed in my, I've got a little bit of a sharp edge there. And just from experience, I knew that that's because there's an internal face there. Uh, so sometimes when you're doing the mirror and then you bring things together, you might've left the face over there. So just getting rid of that face so that, that smooths back out. Um, so this is looking good. Maybe just pull that up a tad. So we've got a nice shape there. Yeah, this is all coming together quite nicely. Uh, maybe just for a little bit of a detail, I'll pull this out, which I guess I don't have the mirror on here. So S Y with that all selected and sort of just kind of create a little bit of an interesting shape here. Maybe would this come in a little bit S Y mm, don't like that. It looks a little silly. I feel like this needs to come out more if I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it, maybe this comes out like that. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. They're your headphones. Um, uh, should I leave it like that? I'm not sure if I love it. I think we can leave it. Uh, of course, we can always make changes after the fact, like I always say. But this is really coming together. Let's just do one more cloth simulation to sort of create uh, a cushion piece under here. Under where? Ha, huh, under here. <laughs> that was really bad. Okay, so I'm gonna select some faces here and I'm gonna use those to make the cushion. So Shift D, P to separate by selection. And then I'm going to apply the mirror. Should I apply the mirror? No. Yes. Yes, I'm gonna apply the mirror. And then bevel, not really doing anything right now. Subdivision. Hmm, should we apply that? Let's actually add in a, so this is tricky. I'm trying to think like a seamstress here. I gotta think about what my pattern needs to be. I'm gonna add in a solidify. Sometimes if you, if you, make, the, if you make the object too close to the shape you want it to be, you won't get these interesting folds and stuff. So I'm trying to think of like as if the cloth was flat, but then when it gets pulled together, like what's the stretch, what's the stretch factor? Um, so maybe we, maybe we do like this. Maybe we just actually, let's get rid of the subdivision entirely. Let's just show that flat. Um, okay, so we've got that. Let's apply the solidify. And then let's just get rid of all the bevel weight there. I kind of want to round this out. So let's add in a, let's add in a bevel and let's have that be weight. And I just want it to be, I just want it to be this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. Let's give that the bevel weight. And we do like two segments, make it pretty big. Something like that, I think. And then maybe we subdivide that, but we don't want to round it on the top. So maybe we add in some creases here. This is getting very, very intense. So creasing will prevent 
the subdivide from getting to it. Subdivide don't like crease. Stays away from the crease. Okay, I think that is kind of what I want to base my cloth stuff on. So let's see here. Let's um maybe we add an edge loop so that that's not so funky looking. Probably should have left my mirror on. Okay, I think that looks fine. Let's um let's apply the bevel. Let's apply the subdivision. Two. Yeah, let's do two. Um, mm, that's gonna be really tight right there. Actually, I have an idea. All right, let's apply that. Okay, let's get rid of all the creasing and the bevel just because the line colors are gonna bother me. So those are gone. Derek feels good. We've got that piece, which you, you don't have to do the cloth simulation. You can just leave it like that. Looks totally fine, but gotta do the cloth simulation. So I don't like how tight the geometry here is. And one thing I found was that if you kind of have more weird and irregular geometry, you might get more interesting folds and stuff. So I'm gonna do a little thing just to kind of even out the geometry. I'm gonna right click merge vertices by distance. And then I'm just gonna drag this up until this area isn't so dense. And we start to get some weird shapes happening underneath. But I don't wanna drag it up so much that I don't have a nice edge loop where I want it around the outside. So I'm kind of watching this area. I've still got a nice edge loop. I think that's gonna be pretty good. So let's leave it at that. You know, this is just kind of looking kind of funky, kind of nasty, but sometimes that actually works really well with cloth simulation. If you watched my Halloween ghost cloth simulation from a few years ago, I actually did this and that's kind of how we got some ratty looking cloth. Um, but let's see if we can do what we did before without all the testing. If you recall, we want to, let's actually bevel this and this will be our seam. Control B and then X only faces. So we've got all our little stitches there. Then let's add in our cloth. Let's see if we can remember all the steps without testing. So we want cloth on, yes. We want pressure up a little bit. We want sewing. We'll turn gravity off. We'll add a pin group. That's gonna be, how do we get that? Let's just, let's see if we can select that edge. Control plus, plus. Is that gonna get everything? Yeah, except I don't want those pieces down here. Let's undo that and undo this. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a vertex group, assign. And that'll be our pin group. So everything, you know, again, like kind of like it's glued to the top there, um, which I always accidentally do this and it's convenient, but I always click in the modifiers instead of the physics tab. But if you click on the modifiers accidentally, there's this little thing called jump to a different tab inside the properties editor. So that'll take you a little shortcut back to the physics tab for people like me who click in the wrong area. Um, so let's turn on pin group for the group we just made. Did we make it? Did we assign? Assign, you gotta remember to sign. Um, okay, let's press space bar, see if we got everything. Boom, we did. And we got some really nice folds there. Now, I really think this is because we have irregular geometry. You get a little bit nicer fold. So let's add back in our solidify and subdivision surface. And yeah, I think that that's looking pretty good. You know, if you had a little bit more of a dense mesh, you know, these might be a little closer together. You know, we might retry that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think that that looks pretty solid. I'm really loving the way my headphones look. Um, to be able to control them all, you might just want to add in an empty. And of course, we'll make it a cube. Make it bigger. Kind of put it in the logical center of our object. And then, okay, so this is controlling all of that. This is controlling the mirror. So this, 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 and this all can get parented to that last empty we created. And now we can rotate this and everything. Oh, except for that comes with it. Control P, keep transform. Oh, it's not coming because it's still got the cloth simulation. So we actually need to apply our cloth simulation. Control A, and now it should come with it. Beautiful. And we can remove our little reference circle there. Um, so now we have our headphone model that we can move around. We can start adding some materials. We can do some lighting. 
Uh, we'll tackle that here in just a little bit, but thanks for being with me. Hopefully your headphones are turning out nicely. Um, hopefully you can add some more details in. You know, we're going to play with materials and animation and stuff in a little bit, but really liking the way these are turning out. Hope you all are having fun. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in just a second in the next part where we'll probably tackle some materials and things of that nature. So thanks for being here again. Peace. All right, all right, all right. Materials, let's talk about materials. So what we have here is our headphone model where we left it off in the last part. Pretty much, I did make a few small changes. I guarantee they were small. Uh, one thing I did was tighten this up a little bit. And rather than adding an edge loop, what I did was in the, in the edge data, um, instead of having the bevel weight at one, I just turned it down to a very low value and that tightened that up quite a bit. You can still see the blue line there, but it's like less bright. Um, did that. The other thing I did was redo this cloth simulation with a tighter mesh, just so I'd have a little bit of a more, you know, a smaller stitch going along there from the previous version. Um, I did not end up doing the collapse method. Uh, I just used the denser geometry and got a little bit of a nicer shape. So I, you are welcome to make those same adjustments if you want, but just wanted to make note of those since they're not exactly like we saw in the previous video. Uh, this, by the way, is the file that we'll get on the, the Patreon. If you're a subscriber there, you'll get the uh, updated file with the animation and all that good stuff. So let's jump into the materials. The first thing I want to do is set up my viewport in a way that's going to work a little bit better. And the way I normally like to do that is to drag a window out over here and then drag this window down a little bit. Um, hide my toolbars there turn off my overlays, and this is where I'll look at the rendered view of my object. So I'll go ahead and go into the rendered view. And then up here, we're going to put this at a shader editor, and this is where we'll actually build some materials. So first thing to do when you're doing materials, not always, but the first thing I like to do is set up some lighting. Um, because if you remember from the shoe tutorial, uh, you don't want to, you don't want your materials looking like poo, <laughs> poop shoe. Anyways, that, uh, yeah, if you saw that, you'd get the joke. But anyways, I like to turn the world strength down to zero. Um, now that will leave us with just a empty black world because there's no light. Um, you could of course use an HDRI to light your scene, which is a little bit easier. Um, or if you're really just, you know, wanting to develop the materials and using this look dev mode, will sort of automatically come with some HDRIs and there's a there's a few different ones there so you can just experiment with some different lighting but um, I like to go straight into the rendered view um, and I am going to render in cycles which I'll switch to a second won't really matter you could do this of course in EV though um, but the first thing I want to do is I always say that the first thing and it's like this it's like the tenth thing but anyways shift a add an area light let's bring this one up and then I'm going to increase the size of it a little bit and you know, lighting is kind of all your own thing. Let's make sure I'm in my front view. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. This is kind of how I usually do a lighting setup. I'll just kind of put one sort of above the object, slightly behind it, and then, um, okay, we can't see. Oh, it's, it's there, it's very slight. Uh, we're gonna turn up the power on that quite a bit until we're seeing our object. So the reason you get that kind of sketchy shading is because that's an EV, which totally works fine. Um, we can actually just keep lighting it in EV for now. Um, and then I like to put kind of a light to one side and maybe this side is behind and then I'll do another side and maybe have that one be slightly in front. There's not really a science here to this, but just want it to be looking kind of good. And then maybe I'll do one more light and let's, um, let's shift D on this one and then Alt G, Alt R just to reset the rotation. Um, I want to have this one painting, pointing up and then I'm going to pull it down a little bit and that just gives us a little bit of a sort of an under under glow. Maybe we rotate it a tad. Um, and yeah, that's a that's kind of a decent lighting setup that I usually start with. Um, but it's hard to tell exactly how your lighting should be until you know where you're going to be looking at your object. You know, uh, this lighting setup wouldn't look necessarily as good from the back because of the way I have this set up. This is kind of to create highlights and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a camera. Um, and then with that, I usually do Alt G to reset the location, Alt R to reset the rotation. And that's just to make sure it's nicely centered in my scene. And then I'll pull that out on the Y axis and then rotate it by 90 degrees so it's looking straight ahead at our object. Um, then with our mouse over in this area, I can press zero on my number pad and that will look through the camera. 
So that's pretty much exactly what I want. Um, maybe we'll just move this up a tad so it's kind of centered, and then we can pull it back a little more just so it's nicely in frame. And since these are mostly square shaped, I might go ahead and change my resolution to something square like that. And last thing I'll do, not the last thing, there's gonna be a lot of things ahead of us. Uh, change the focal length. Now, this is all personal opinion. A really low focal length is gonna give you some intense perspective. Could be a style you're going for. Um, you could, of course, go orthographic, which is gonna be like a pure, straight on, no perspective view. Um, but I usually like to do something in the middle. So using a relatively long focal length, something like 90, um, I tend to like because I like to see the perspective, but I don't want it to distort the shape of the object too much. So something like that I think looks good. Um, and now you know you could rotate, you could rotate the object a little bit. This is just using that main controller object, which why don't we just go ahead and main control name that object so we can see it. Um, so now you can kind of rotate your object just to get a different angle. Um, I think what I'll do now is go ahead and pop into cycles so that we can have a little bit more realistic rendering. And uh, if you have GPUs, you wanna make sure that's on GPU compute, it's gonna be quite a bit faster. Um, now I'm just going to, yeah, sort of adjust this lighting. I'm just looking for interesting shapes here. I don't want any part of the object to be too bright. I don't want any part of it to be too shaded. So maybe pulling up the power on this top one. Um, this one down here can maybe come back a little bit. You can see I'm kind of watching this edge here getting a little bit too much light on the bottom. So maybe we maybe we actually pull this one behind too. Just trying to get kind of a nice highlight on that bottom there. Maybe the power comes on this up a little bit. That looks good. This side could probably use a little bit more light coming. In general, I like to really put most of the light sort of behind my objects so that um, the silhouette is getting most of the highlight. Now, of course, this is just a shadeless kind of white material here, so it's not gonna be fully representative of what we're going for, but just sort of moving these lights around until I have, you know, kind of just an interesting composition. Now, this ear cup is just a little bit bright, so maybe we, um, maybe we need to pull this over a little bit or back a tad. Anyways, that's something, of course, we can adjust later, but uh, just for the sake of organization, one thing I do like to do is take all my lights, shift clicking all those and the camera, and then press M and move them to a new collection, which I like to call LCA, which stands for Lights Camera Action. So that if I, um, just so that I can you know, keep things semi-organized, you know, I, I do try to stay somewhat organized. Um, but anyways, that's looking fine for lighting. Um, like I said, you can continue in Eevee if you want. There'll be a couple materials we make that are, are really just one material that we make that's gonna look a little bit better in cycles, but I can I can show you how you would do that in Eevee as well. Um, but I think this is a good place to go ahead and get started. Um, now, one thing I will do because I just love it so much is down here in the color management options, I'm gonna change the look to very high contrast because I like contrast. Actually, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm going overboard, so I'll just, I'll just do high contrast. We don't need to do very high. Um, but yeah, this is looking good. Um, now sometimes, you know, this is a little bit dark up here. I don't know. Sometimes what I like to do is add like a plane in the, in the front there that can kind of reflect some light. Maybe let's just, let's just do that now. RX90. Um, if you saw the animation I did on Instagram, by the way, this was kind of my inspiration. I was adding that reflector plane. I was like, ooh, that looks cool. Um, but yeah, I usually call this plane a reflector and I just put it sort of behind the camera and what that does is just it sort of allows a little bit of light to reflect off of it this is just kind of yeah like a white material you can see if we didn't have that on it's just a little bit darker so having that light it's not really like emitting light but it's just reflecting some and we're getting a little bit less blackness up there you could add an actual light for that but um, I like to use that kind of reflector plane and we may eventually add a material to that so that it's a little bit brighter but for now, let's just leave it like that. Um, now for this object, so it doesn't get in our way. In the visibility, I'm gonna turn off, or what I wanna do, viewport display, display as wire, just so that we can see through it, whereas we could not before. That's it before, and that's it with wire. Okay, enough of all that. Make sure you're saving your file. And what I'm gonna do now is start actually making some materials. So first material, 
going to be relatively simple. Let's go up here, click new in this previously unused area of our workspace. And we'll name that, um, I'm just going to call it base because that'll be sort of the, yeah, just like the, the main color. So do whatever color you want here. And you don't have to stay in your camera view when you're looking at the materials. Um, but the color I liked, and of course, do whatever you please was sort of a, like a, sort of like an army, almost like an army green. So turning the value pretty far down, but then also the saturation. So we just kind of have this like sort of sagey, sagey green material. Again, the choice is yours. You know, if you wanted to make it metallic, of course you could slide the metallic shader up. If you wanted to make it shiny, you could slide the roughness down, less shiny, slide it up. Um, but I think the default value 0.5 looks pretty good there for me. So uh, I am going to turn off the metallic just because I like the not having metallic on is just going to make it look like a painted plastic or something like that. Um, so I think that's good. I'm going to go back into my camera view. And what do I want to do next? So obviously looking over here, I can see where the material has been applied. But another thing I want to do is in the options for this material down here under viewport display, I'm just going to give it a color just so that in the viewport I can actually see um, what objects have that material. So I want to have this object, this object, and this object. So selecting this one last, I can do Control L and link materials. So now those objects will also have that material. I can see that over here in my render view as well as over here in my viewport display. So the next material I think I might want to set up is the one for these cushions here. So let's add a new material and we'll name that one Kush, because that's going to be the cushions. And we're going to go for sort of a leathery type look here. Uh, what I just did was press Control T, which if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, Node Wrangler, um, pressing Control T with this shader selected will add the texture coordinate, the mapping, and an image texture. Um, because there's no image texture in there now, it's just going to automatically display as pink, which is kind of a thing Blender does to help you realize, like, hey, there's no texture in there. So um, I want to, instead of using an image texture, I'm going to use a procedural texture, and the one I'll use is a Voronoi texture. So another Node Wrangler hotkey, I'm going to press Shift S and switch this to a texture Voronoi texture. Now, I'm not actually going to use this to drive the color, but instead I'm going to use it to drive the normal because we want to make sort of some bumps like our like our leather may have. So I'm going to add in a vector bump, put that right there, and then this Voronoi texture actually needs to go into the height field here. And um, it's not going to be doing much because right now what the object is doing is it's looking for a, or the material is looking for a UV map to map that Voronoi texture, but there are no UVs that we created for that yet. Um, and you could of course create UVs, but I want to instead use this object input. And this tends to work really well for procedural textures, just using that object input. Um, now, so that we can see what objects have that material, let's go ahead and give that a viewport color too. And then let's do this, Control L again to link materials. So we can see we've got this kind of crackled Voronoi texture on here. That's not quite the look I'm going for. Um, so what I'm going to use instead of this color input from the Voronoi is the distance. So when we drag that in there, you'll see that's what it's doing. Now it's kind of going, it looks like it's kind of going into the object now, but I instead want it to go out. So it kind of looks like little bumps and stuff. Um, the strength on this right now is quite high. So let's turn that down a little bit. And then this distance, sometimes turning the distance to a really low value, like, you know, 0.1 or even 0.01 will help reduce the look of some of these like points that you kind of got before. Um, and then the other thing, of course, we want to do is change the scale quite a bit further down just until it's at sort of a nice look. Now, if you did watch the materials portion of the shoe video, which I would highly recommend watching that, that goes into much more depth on materials in general. Um, this kind of looks like the sole of the shoe we were making first. So it's very similar texture here. Um, but I'm going to turn this strength down even further just so that it's a very subtle effect and then maybe bring the scale up a tad, you know, just kind of going for the look we want. And this is one great thing about procedural textures versus image textures is that you can just play with all these values and, and get all sorts of different looks. So I think that's going to be cool. Maybe we turn the strength down even more. And yeah, now we have sort of a nice, sort of just bumpy, leathery looking material. Um, now the roughness you can adjust same way as before, you know, you can make it very rough. 
you can make it very shiny. The choice is all yours. Um, and you can even use this Voronoi texture to drive the roughness so that certain areas are rougher and other areas are shiny. Um, so right now it looks like the points are shiny and the middle areas are sort of rough, which is about what it would be like, I would imagine. You know, if you're wearing these earphones, then the kind of parts of the leather that are bumping out are going to be a little bit shinier. Um, now, if you did want to have a little bit more control over that, you could add in a map range. Um, so the Voronoi texture distance is outputting values from 0 to 1. And if we remember from our roughness, if we remember from our roughness slider, 0 is going to be very shiny. One is going to be very rough, and we don't want quite that full range of roughness. Um, so a map range is going to allow us to control it. So it's taking in values from zero to one, which is fine, but we want it to output values not quite so much of a range. So we're going to map the range. That's where the node name comes from. So I want it to, at its shiniest, be maybe a, maybe like a point two, point three, and then at its most rough, uh, we can have that be kind of high, like a 0.7. Now this is going to be a relatively subtle effect, but little things like that can really do a lot to help make your material look a little bit more realistic. So that looks good. Now let's just pick a color for that. Um, and for this one, I'm just going to go with sort of a, sort of like a camel, camel color, I think is what the uh, interior designers may call it. And usually when I'm doing color, I like to just sort of pick the rough color over here, and then I'll tweak it with the uh, hue saturation value slider. So um, I want this to be a little bit less saturated. How dark do we want to go? Maybe I think something like this is going to be fine. Pretty bright, not too saturated. Just want a, a subtle caramely, camely color there. Um, I think that that looks pretty good. Now I'm, I'm wanting a little bit more light in this scene. I always tell people sometimes from beginners, I see their renderings and they're just so dark. It's like, you're not, it doesn't, you're not paying for the power bill here. Just crank them up. I'm gonna bring this a little bit brighter. And then do we need like another light? Or maybe maybe if this one came over a little bit. Let's see what this looked like. Okay, so that see this would be that's kind of like that's getting a little bit too flat. You know, it's too lit. You don't you can't see those shapes as well. It's too lit, fam. So let's just maybe pull this back a little bit. And you could make this lamp a little bit bigger. So just right click to do that. Just so it's wrapping around that edge a little bit more. I think that that's gonna look a little bit nicer. Um, usually these lamps on the side, I do make a little bit bigger than the other ones just because I want that to be sort of just a general light that's gracing the object. Okay, that looks cool. Uh, you know, you could rotate this around, to see what it looks like. And it is looking pretty good. We're really, uh, we're really moving along, along quickly here. Um, now, the next thing I do wanna do is you know, of course, these aren't just going to be open like this. So the first thing I might do is add in another material to this object. So it's on the same object. We have a new slot now, and I'm going to do new material, and I'm going to name that um, speaker. And that's just going to be kind of a bland material that goes on the inside um, so that it doesn't get that, that green texture. And I'm going to add that material. This still has the mirror modifier on it. Um, I'm going to do select that face, control plus, control plus to grow my selection so that now I have that whole area selected. And then I'm gonna assign that material right there. So now it just has that new material, which is the speaker material. Um, but like I said, I wanna make that not white. I'm gonna make it sort of just a, just a super dark, super rough material so that that just kind of will read as the inside of the speaker. And turning the specular down will help make that even darker. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. Very nice. I'm gonna turn the roughness down on this. This is this is how I do materials, by the way. Just constant switching. Sorry, not the roughness. I'm turning down the strength a little bit. Now I do have viewport denoising on, which is making it look nice and smooth in the viewport. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit muddy, especially when you're working with like bump maps and stuff. So if you want, you can disable that, and that can help you see the look of that material a little bit better. Um, so I think that that is looking good. Now, another thing you could do is on this plastic material, you could add a little bit of bump to that as well. Um, that's something I've covered a lot in other videos, but basically same process as we did for this uh, cushion material here. Um, but I think I'm just gonna leave it at a very flat, very basic material right now. But of course, tons of options. Um, check out that shoe video if you haven't. That's got a lot of other tips for working with materials in much more depth. So what I wanna do now is add in uh, we're going to do just a very, very simple modeling to add in sort of a, a mesh where that 
um, you know, where the mesh goes on a headphone. You've seen it before. I'm going to tab into edit mode and then I'm just going to select an edge ring here on the inside. Press shift D to duplicate it. Scale it down just a tad so it's a it's it's separate. It's its own mesh island. And then I'm just going to press F to fill it in. So now we have a um, just sort of a plane going right there. And let's add our own new material for that. So I'm going to press plus one more time and we're going to do new and we're going to have that called mesh. Now for this material, let's go ahead and apply it here, assign. Okay, so now that's got the material, um, but you can see that the other is still underneath there, the black one. So that's all good. Now for this material in the viewport, I might actually, uh, so you can actually change this alpha value in the viewport as well, which will make it a little bit transparent, um, which is gonna be helpful just so we can still see the inside of our object. But of course we need to set that up over here now. So this is where things get a little bit different in cycles versus EV. So if I was just to turn the alpha down on this in cycles, that's just gonna make it like more and more transparent, which is kind of what we're going for. Now, if you were in EV, it's not gonna look like that. Let's see how fast this loads. Let's go to EV. Um, so in EV, you would need to go into the material settings on that mesh material. And then you could probably turn off the shadow and then you would wanna change the blend mode to probably alpha blend, which would then uh, have it work with that. So that's the only difference with EV versus cycles there. Um, so make sure you do that if you are working in EV, but I'm gonna switch back to cycles. Um, I'm actually gonna leave this alpha up because alpha is just kind of like adding transparency to an object, which just isn't very realistic. So I want an actual texture to drive what's you know see-through, what's not. So I'm gonna do my same trick again, control T, to add in these nodes here, again, with the Node Wrangler add-on. And I'm gonna plug this into the alpha value. And then let's switch this to, this time I'm gonna use a magic texture, which if you've seen my videos before, you know I like to use for things like uh, cloth and mesh and stuff like that. So I'm gonna plug this into the object input like I did before. And uh, actually, you know what, for this one, that's not quite looking how I want. I might actually use, I could either use a generated or the UV, but you know, I think we're gonna map some images, like a left and a right icon to those. So um, I actually will use the UV. So what I'll do is just with that plane selected, I'm just gonna press U and unwrap. And that's just going to do, you know, there, there's no, we didn't make any seams or anything, but since it's such a simple object, it's just a flat plane, just pressing unwrap is gonna work totally fine. So uh, let's bring the scale up on this till it's looking sort of meshy. And like most things with materials, or like, yeah, this is, this is a massive concept to understand, but these all these sliders all go basically from zero to one. So knowing that black corresponds to a value of zero, white corresponds to a value of one, if we plug that in there, so is that, that should be working now because it's plugged into the alpha, um, but there's not a lot of fully black. You know, you should theoretically be able to see through that, but. I want to sort of tighten this up a little bit. So let's add in a converter color ramp. And then what I'm gonna do is just pull up the black values. You can see the more you pull them up, now we can actually see through. So the areas that are black are now zero on the alpha, which remember is fully see-through. So this is how we can kind of control that mesh material. So just kind of pulling these together a little bit until we have sort of the look we're going for. And then maybe bringing the scale quite a bit up. So this is, you know, this is going to be pretty subtle, but you can kind of see, you can kind of see through there. And, you know, bringing that, bringing that black even higher up is going to help with that. So that looks pretty cool. And of course it is white now, so it's a little bit distracting, but if we make this a black, then you can see, okay, so now that's working a little bit more like I want. So I just want that to be pretty subtle. Now to make this a little bit more visible, I'm actually going to use this magic texture again to give it some bump. So let's plug the, uh, I think you could use color or factor here. Let's use the factor. And then I'm gonna add in a vector bump, pop that right there. And now there's actually a little bit of like bump happening there. It's, it's just starting to become a little bit more realistic. The roughness, you can probably turn all the way up to one. And yeah, now we've got sort of this nice, you know, there's there's a little bit of depth to that where you can still see through it, but it's not, it's not like fully, yeah, it just it kind of looks like a mesh. You can see something back there, but you've got something also in front of it. Um, now the way that's really gonna pop is by adding an image texture that's on that plane. So let's go ahead and add that now. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take a quick pause and then I'll probably do a little time-lapse thing to uh, to show you how I make this texture. Now the fastest way to do this would just be to open Photoshop or something, but I had kind of a clever way to just make the image texture in Blender. Um, so I'll show you that. I'm gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna do this in 
uh, time lapse speed, and then I'll, I'll add in maybe like a little uh, talk through of what I'm doing. Um, so let's go ahead and press Control S to save our file, and I'll show you how I made up that little LR texture. All right, so in 3x speed, I am starting a new file, adding a plane, then also adding a camera, bringing it up so it's looking straight down. Then on that plane, I'm going to add in a, uh, a material to that, and this is going to be an emission shader just so that it's white. I left it at one, but I would actually turn it up a little bit past one. Uh, now that's important in your color, color management to change it from filmic to standard so that you get more accurate colors. Then just adding in some text, um, shift A text, I'm choosing to make it centered. Uh, for the camera, doing orthographic, even though I don't think there'd be any perspective here. Um, for the black material, I just disconnected the um, shader and then that basically just makes it black. In the text settings, you can adjust the size and spacing of the things and of course the font as well. And then just uh, rendering that as an image and I basically got a black and white texture. Simple as that. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I can clarify, but let's get back to it. Look at that, didn't even save the file I just made. So what I did there, of course you saw all that happen. So basically what I wanna do now is bring in that render I just did. We'll call it a render even though it's like, you wouldn't show that to someone and say, look at my render. You'd say, oh wow, you have a Microsoft Word on your computer. Very cool, dude. Um, but let's add in that image texture. So Control T on the mesh material, which is gonna give us our pinkish material. Still with all the other stuff on there though, so if you know you wanted to go for pink in there, you know, getting real gamery, pretty cool. Um, but I want to add in the texture, so I'm going to open on an image texture, and then navigate to where I have that saved. Dun, 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 3D texture, and um, before I did RL, this time I did right, left, um, which actually I think I didn't... You might notice how I, I switched the view transform, or sorry, the view to standard instead of whatever the other one is, standard filmic. Um, and it's actually looking now like I didn't make it quite bright enough. And of course I did not save the file. So uh, we're just gonna go with this one anyways in case you made the same mistake. But it looks like this might not be a perfect white. This should be a perfect black though. Let's see, this one looks a little bit brighter than the one I did before. I think on that plane, the emission one, I should have turned it up just a little bit past one so it was brighter. Uh, but we'll use this one anyways. And because we unwrapped that when we uh, used the magic texture, um, this already does have UVs on it. So um, you can see that it's automatically been mapped there, which is great. Um, but we are gonna wanna move it so that it doesn't have LR on both of them. Um, so we need to do a couple of things. So in this object, I'm going to go ahead and apply the mirror modifier. So Control A to apply the mirror. So now we should have, um, you know, it's still all one object, but now we have separate pieces and I think I need to update my blender. <laughs> Someone's trying to kill me with through my headphones with blades to the ears. This actually happened in my last tutorial. Um, just ignore it, I think. I don't know why that's happening. Um, but I'm gonna change this to a, a UV image editor and then tabbing into edit mode. Um, we can see with both of these selected, if we ignore the blades going through our skulls, uh, we've got, well, we should have both of these selected now, which I can see I have them both selected. Again, ignore the blades going through your skull. Someone please help me, why is that happening? I need to update my blender. Um, so I'm just gonna, with them both selected, I'm gonna kind of put them where I want them, something like that, or sorry, to the scale I want. Um, now the L over here looks fine, which um, I don't really know what the front is. Like we're gonna say this is the right over here. Um, so this one is done the correct way where the R is facing the right way. Um, but the L is facing, or sorry, the yeah, they're both R. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate this to get it at the angle I want. Now again, I have both of these selected while blades are going through my skull. Um, I have both of these selected now. So what I need to do now is just select the other one. So what's gonna be? I think it's gonna be if we look through our camera. Yeah. So here's the camera. It's gonna be this one. So now just selecting this one, uh, we moved, the reason we moved both the UVs together is so they stayed the same size, but now I just have one of them selected. So if I just G, X and move this over, it's gonna be on the left. So now that one's L, that one's R, and then we can do S, or let's do this while we're looking at it, S, X, and then negative one, holding control to make sure that snaps right to negative one. 
Uh, now we have that working all right. So we've got the L and we've got the R. So that's all good. Um, what I want to do now that I'm liking that is get rid of those blades. Switch this back to a shader editor. Um, so we made, you could have done it the other way around if you knew exactly what colors you wanted to do, which I did, but for some reason I didn't put them together. Um, I'm gonna add in a converter, color ramp, uh, and now I wanna have some control over these colors. So I did mention that that wasn't a perfect white, which when you're doing like this color ramp method doesn't really matter too much because you're just adjusting the colors on your own anyways, but if you were going to be plugging this into a, like a roughness value or something like that, then if you were expecting the white to be perfectly white, but you were like, it was getting a little bit shininess or something, um, that could be because your colors weren't quite off. But for what I'm doing here, this is just sort of eyeballed. So one thing I'll do is just flip this around the other way. Um, I do want the this end to be pretty dark. Um, so yeah, we'll just leave that all the way at black. And then this, I don't want to be quite fully white. So maybe we just kind of Pull that down a little bit so we've got a little bit more of like a gray there and yeah that's looking cool maybe you want to turn up your magic texture a little bit so that you got a finer mesh oh yeah looking real nice maybe we want to make that just a little bit more see-through now that we've got the letter on there you can really see that there's a little bit of a mesh screen there so yeah that's kind of a cool look and you know depending on how see-through that is you could want to go in there and add some more detail to actually what's happening on the inside the way we left it is pretty uh, pretty basic pretty unrealistic but you get the point you could uh, you could do as much as you want but yeah I think we like is that everything is that it well no okay we gotta you gotta add the dirt.com all over the thing because why would you not so just a little more UV magic for you I'm gonna go into my base material here which I need to select over here and then I'm going to do the old control T and now it's all pink and gamery um, you know now might be the time to add in some like cat ears or something you know if you're really trying to be cool look at that oh yeah super gamery uh, we're not we're not doing that Derek let's go into our image texture and open up our trusty oh look it's me I really need a new picture a new headshot my mom hates that picture Let's go into my files where I have all these textures. Sticker. Sticker 2 has the QR code. I think I just need sticker 1. I don't think I need the QR code. Let's add sticker 1. And again, no UV map. It looks like we got a little here left over from who knows what. Sometimes when you're making objects from primitives that already have UV maps, you know that will be maintained. So I think we started with a cube so you can see like it's still retaining some of that. UV, but I want to, let's add in the Dirk logo right here. So let's tab into edit mode, dude. <laughs> All right, Blender's a great software. If, if this is like, if you've only ever used like Cinema 4D and this is your first Blender tutorial, then to the Blender community, I apologize for uh, making someone think Blender is a trash piece of software that's trying to kill you through your headphones. But yeah, I don't know, that happened in my last video too. I definitely need to update past 3.1.2. Maybe someone could tell me what's happening. I'm looking at my computer. I don't think my GPUs are on fire quite yet, so it's not that. Could be that. But anyways, I'm going to add in a color ramp for one. Um, so the texture was going from black to white. Black was the logo, which I think I want to now be white, which we'll just, we can see here. I want that to be white, and then I want the other end to be this color. So I'm just going to hold over this, Control C, and then select over here, Control V and then now plug that back together. Okay, so now we've got our green back, but the logo is white. So for this, I wanna kinda of put it right flat on there. Um, you could just do your U unwrap, which would work pretty good, um, but I want it to kinda of go all the way around the thing, and uh, as soon as you're working with something more complex than just a flat plane, the, the unwrap might not work as well. Um, so let's, uh, let's just change this back to a UV image editor. So let's just say we select the whole object, ooh, except for except for these. Or let's select everything, and then in the mesh, let's deselect that so we don't have the mesh selected. And then uh, you can do, I think, Control Seven or Shift Shift Seven, Control Shift Control Seven. Oh wait, I wanted to align my view to this. Yeah, Control Seven, Shift Control Seven, or is it just Control Seven or just Shift Seven? Shift Control. One, seven. Some combination there will align your view um, to, like shift control one would be aligned with the 
you know, what would be the side or front or top. So control seven or <laughs> shift seven is going to line it there, which is looking kind of at the wrong direction. So shift control seven will have it look the other way. And that's what we're doing. And then I'm going to just control plus 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 to grow my selection. And it should not select that mesh because that was a separate thing. And then now I'm going to do U project from view. U project from view favorite. And I'm just going to scale this up, um, put it wherever you want. But this is just, you know, how you could add a little bit of a logo. So I'm just going to rotate this until it looks right in my view. Now you don't have to do this in render view. If your computer is really slowing down, you can go into your um, just texture mode there and now you could see it in the viewport like we could pause it over here and then that could be a little bit faster for you but now you're focused on the knives cutting through your body okay that looks good let's do the same thing over on this one since we applied the mirror modifier these are not separate now god dude that is insane oh wait i need to align my view first now i think that this one i can just do shift seven no shift control seven okay control plus 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 make sure you got it all you project from view let's get it over here where it goes Scale it up and let's rotate it till it's going the right way. Someone please save my ears from the knives. Okay, cool. You know, you could have them both selected if you wanted to make sure they were the same size, which yeah, it looks like I didn't quite get them together. So I had them both selected. So just so that they match on both sides, you know, might, you might want to just like align those. And um, they're probably not going straight up because I can, you know, this should be going straight over because I know this is going straight down. We're working with some weird views here, but don't worry about that. That looks good. Um, okay, so back in our rendered view, we can see that texture has been applied. Um, now up here, just to get rid of this like, stretching. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the other thing I did, I think in the previous file, we had, um, this was all one object with no, or, you know, it didn't have the mirror modifier, so it was just like one whole mesh. Um, but I ended up adding in the mirror modifier just because I was making some changes. But I'm going to go ahead and in object mode, because you can't apply modifiers in edit mode, apply the mirror modifier. And then I'm just going to take this whole thing and then just you project from view. And then I'm just going to rotate this and align it with none other than the dirt.com. Now, if you wanted to avoid stretching and you know what, maybe I need to, I'm going to move this all into like a white area. And then I'm going to deselect some of these so that I can make it so that dirt.com doesn't overlap too much with the rest. Um, now, if you didn't want any stretching at all, you'd probably want to apply your subdivision because sometimes subdivision will kind of mess with your UVs a little bit. So I'm just going to scale this up just till the line isn't going over there. Cool. Looking good. Um, now, with this method that I use, I call it like the sticker sheet method. You can also just add in like a little... You know, if you wanted to add in a little detail here, you could just move that into a, a black area. So then that would get a detail. You could do the same thing over here, move that into a dark area. Now we've just kind of got that little stripe detail. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for the modeling and the materials. Rendering, just turn up the samples as much as your computer wants to handle. Use denoising, usually a pretty good thing. Uh, F12 is going to be your hotkey. To render, let's take a look at what it looks like. I think it looks pretty darn cool. I'm excited to see everyone else's headphones, by the way. Uh, so when you do make your headphones, be sure you share them with me on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are. And uh, probably not Facebook, to be honest. I'm, I'm not. If you send me a message on Facebook, I ain't responding anytime real soon. But I'll see it eventually. So render your headphones out. Do some cool materials. Do some cool textures. Do some cool modeling. Excited to see some ones that don't look like this. I, I, I love to share the ones that are that are unique. So if you, if you do make something unique, definitely share it with me on Instagram or wherever you're at besides Facebook. And uh, yeah, show it to your mom. Put it on your fridge. Show it to your cat. Show it to your dog. Watch out for the blades piercing through your head. I can't. This is... This, this Tutorial could have gone south with all that, all those dangerous sharp edges. Uh, Blender's a great software that doesn't that doesn't normally happen. It's something that happened in a recent version for me. But anyways, this is looking good. Um, I think what I'll do now is maybe just cover a very short little bit of animation, so that you know if you do want to do an animation, you can you can have an animation. If you did want to make this a little bit brighter on the front, then uh, you could add a material to this plane. I usually would name that reflector or something like that. And then you could make it an emissive, but then it turns a little bit like a light. Uh, instead, what I would do is just maybe pump this value up to something high, like five will give you 
Um, it'll start to give you a little bit of light on that front side. You can kind of see what's happening there. And you know, if you really wanted to go stylistic, you could make this like a color and, um, and then you get some sort of really subtle, like red coming in there. It's all up to you. Do whatever you want. I like to leave that just at a white though. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Really cool. Really cool. There's the reflector object. Nice. Okay. We'll leave that at that. Let's move on to a very brief animation. Um, remember to save your file, control S. And then I'm going to save this as record materials base underscore animation. Let's do a little bit of animation. Why not, right? So I'm just going to do a very simple like looping, rotating animation. I do kind of want to revisit this project to um, do like a really cool animation, maybe synced up with sound because they are headphones after all. Um, but let's change this to a graph editor. And what I want to do is uh, to make this looping, well, for one, let's decide how long we want it to be. So let's say um, six seconds. So I'm going to do six times 30 because I like to do 30 frames per second. And now to make something looping, if you have your first frame on frame one and then your last frame at 180 in this case, if they're the same rotation, like in this case, negative 35, which you would add 360, um, then you'll have two frames that are identical, exactly the same, and they'll it'll kind of stutter a little bit. Um, so what you probably want to do is go to frame zero for your first one, or you could do 181 and one, but I'm going to do zero and 180, and then decide which way you want it to rotate. So if I want it to rotate the other way, I'm going to do minus 360, and then right click and insert single keyframe. And then uh, let's just watch this in our regular view so we get a little better playback. So now we have our rotation and you can see it started sort of, you know, speeds up and slows down. Um, if you wanted to have consistent animation, um, then you could press T and do linear, which then it'll just be like a, just a static rotation. Um, but another thing you could do, and this is a curve I use a lot, is let's say, you know, we don't want it to fully slow down at the start and end. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit and I'm just holding control looking in the top left. I see 20 degrees there and then rotate this one, maybe also 20 degrees so that the motion is kind of constant. So we still have Bezier motion, but it never fully slows down to like a stop. But what I could do now is kind of pull these handles closer together so we get sort of a little speed up in the middle. That's sort of a cool look. You know, it still loops, but it's just a little bit more interesting. So I'm liking that a lot. Um, yeah, so you would just, to render an animation, you would just need to select an output folder, and then you don't want to render it to a video file typically. If you're rendering an EV where it renders super fast, you could do that, but you usually want to render to a um, individual frames and then string them together either in Blender or I usually use After Effects, which I'm hating Adobe software more and more. So um, maybe I won't be doing that forever. But but yeah, render them out to frames and then string them all together and um, you know pick whatever resolution you want. For Instagram, people are always asking how I get the quality. Um, I don't change too much. I don't do too much, but I usually render at you know like 1500 or something. Um, you wouldn't want to go much below 1080p for yeah 1080 by 1080 for Instagram. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of a, a topic for another day. Um, now the last thing I will show you since I did like literally hours ago post um, the actual animation, um, I did kind of a cool thing where it looked like there was like a foggy plane there. Um, and the way I did that was I'm going to add in a plane, um, RX90. So this, the way I discovered this, which another thing people always ask is like, where do you come up with these ideas? So I was actually adding in a reflector plane like I did back here um, after I had it all lit and everything and I was like whoa that looks really cool like one thing I love about 3d is that it's just like it's obviously 3d like you know obviously we're going for realistic stuff here but you know I kind of like leaning into the fact that it's not real like you, you can't do this with photography like that that just looks cool so I liked the look of that but I was like well you can't really see the object um, so what I did was um, in the shader editor I just added a new material um, I'll just call it glass for now and then just turn up the transmission and then yeah like that's pretty much it um you could turn up i'm not still sure exactly what the difference between transmission roughness and just turning up the roughness is but yeah i turned up one of those one or the other um you could also turn the transmission down just a little bit so it's not fully at one and then i'll make it even foggier 
Um, but that's how I that's how I did that effect. Super simple. So um, yeah, so we got we got it all in there. We did the materials. We did the animation. Um, hopefully you all enjoy this one. I'm really looking forward to seeing your headphones. Um, definitely get them going, get working on them because I think I will do a follow up uh, where we do maybe a little bit more anim advanced animation uh, with these to kind of make an advertisement like we did with the phone tutorial, which many of you I'm sure have seen. But yeah, thanks for being here. Like and subscribe. Uh, share your headphones with me. Uh, you can get this full file on Patreon if you want it. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Uh, thanks for being here. I love you so much. Goodbye.